quiet, shadowed streets of Nuremberg, under the cloak of a chilling evening in autumn 1883, my story begins. My name is Wilhelm, a clockmaker by trade, and a resident of this ancient city, where the cobblestone streets whisper tales of old, and the winds carry secrets long forgotten. It was on such an evening, precisely at dusk, when the boundary between day and night blurs into a realm of twilight, that my ordinary life was eclipsed by the extraordinary, pulling me into depths unknown. Nuremberg, with its rich history and Gothic architecture, has always been a place where the past and present intertwine, creating a tapestry of mystery and allure. However, beneath its enchanting exterior, I would soon discover a layer of darkness that few knew existed. My fascination with this city's history led me down a path that I could have never anticipated, one that began on that seemingly innocuous evening when I decided to take a detour through the less-traveled streets on my way home from the shop. As I meandered through the narrow alleyways, the fading light casting long shadows that danced upon the ancient walls, I stumbled upon a street that I could not recall ever noticing before. It was eerily quiet, the usual sounds of evening life absent, as if I had stepped into a forgotten fragment of the city. The street, Königstrasse, was lined with dilapidated buildings that bore the marks of time, their once stately facades now shrouded in decay and despair. Compelled by curiosity and an inexplicable sense of dread, I ventured further, my footsteps echoing on the cobblestones, the only sound in this silent street. It was then that I noticed a peculiar shop, nestled between two crumbling edifices, its existence seemingly out of place. The shop, cloaked in shadows, bore no sign, yet the window displayed an array of oddities that piqued my interest, ancient tomes bound in leather, curious artifacts from distant lands, and mechanical devices of intricate design. Drawn to the window, I peered inside, my eyes adjusting to the dim light, when suddenly, a figure emerged from the darkness. An old man, his face weathered by time, his eyes gleaming with a knowledge that seemed to transcend the ages. He beckoned me inside, and against my better judgment, I found myself compelled to enter. The interior of the shop was a labyrinth of shelves laden with objects of arcane significance, the air thick with the scent of must and mold. The old man introduced himself as Heinrich, the keeper of this repository of curiosities. As we conversed, he revealed that he was a collector of stories, each item in his shop a key to a tale untold. It was then that he offered to share with me a story that he claimed was interwoven with the very fabric of Nuremberg itself, a story that had its roots in the darkest chapters of the city's past. Intrigued, I listened as Heinrich spun a tale of a hidden street in Nuremberg, one that did not appear on any map, a place that existed between the seams of reality and legend. He spoke of Königstrasse, the very street upon which we stood, and of its sinister history that had been erased from the collective memory of the city. According to Heinrich, Königstrasse was once home to a cult that practiced ancient and forbidden rites, their rituals invoking forces beyond human comprehension. As the story unfolded, I felt a chill that had little to do with the autumn air. Heinrich's words painted a picture of a street cursed, its residents plagued by unexplained disappearances and phenomena that defied logical explanation. The cult, he claimed, had unlocked a portal to a realm of shadows, where entities of unspeakable nature dwelled, their influence seeping into the world of the living tainting Königstrasse with an aura of malevolence. Captivated by the tale, I failed to notice the change in the atmosphere of the shop, the air growing colder, the shadows deeper. Heinrich's voice became a whisper, his eyes locking onto mine with an intensity that bordered on fanaticism. He spoke of a forthcoming convergence, a rare alignment of celestial and terrestrial forces that would reopen the portal, unleashing chaos upon the city. It was then that the true nature of Heinrich's intent became clear. He believed that I was the key to preventing this cataclysm, that my presence in Königstrasse was no accident but the result of a destiny intertwined with the fate of Nuremberg itself. As the weight of his words settled upon me, a sense of dread filled my heart. 
the realization that I had been drawn into a narrative far beyond my comprehension. The evening had deepened into night. The shop now enveloped in darkness, save for the flickering light of a single candle. Heinrich's story had reached its climax, leaving me standing on the precipice of a mystery that threatened to engulf not only me, but the city I called home. The first part of my journey had concluded, leaving me with more questions than answers, my role in the events to come yet to be revealed. As I stepped out of the shop, the street appeared different, as if my perception had been altered by the tale I had been told. Königstrasse, with its shadowed history and cursed legacy, had become the stage upon which a battle between light and darkness would unfold, and I, Wilhelm, a simple clockmaker, had unwittingly become a player in this ancient drama. The clock tower in the distance began to chime, its tolling marking the hour and a reminder of the passage of time. Time, I realized, was both my ally and adversary. As the convergence approached, the line between past and future blurring into a singular point of destiny. With each step I took, I felt the weight of centuries bearing down upon me, the echoes of a forgotten past whispering secrets meant for my ears alone. As I made my way back through the streets of Nuremberg, the city seemed to watch, its ancient stones and time-worn buildings silent witnesses to the unfolding story. The night air was charged with anticipation, the city holding its breath, waiting for the next chapter to begin. And so my journey into the heart of darkness had commenced, a path that would lead me through the veiled history of Nuremberg, toward a confrontation with forces beyond my understanding. The tale of Königstrasse, a street shrouded in mystery and fear, had ensnared me, pulling me deeper into its shadows. The events that were to follow, the challenges I would face and the truths I would uncover, would test the very fabric of my reality, pushing me to the limits of my sanity and beyond. This was only the beginning. The night's embrace deepened as I ventured beyond the threshold of Heinrich's shop, the narrative he entrusted me with weaving into the fabric of my thoughts like a relentless mist. The streets of Nuremberg, once familiar and comforting, now seemed to hold a clandestine whisper, urging me forward into the unknown. The tale of Königstrasse, a street cloaked in shadows and secrets, had not concluded with Heinrich's words, but had merely opened the doorway to a labyrinth of mysteries that I was now compelled to navigate her, armed with nothing but the haunting story and a growing sense of uneasy. I resolved to uncover the truth behind the cult and the alleged portal to another realm. The city's library, a grand edifice of knowledge that had stood for centuries, seemed the most logical place to begin my quest. Its ancient tomes and historical records held the potential to shed light on the dark corners of Nuremberg's past, including the enigmatic Königstrasse. As dawn broke, casting a pale light over the city, I made my way to the library. The early morning hours offered a quiet solitude, the vast halls of the library echoing with the hushed reverence of a sacred place. My search began in the archives, where documents dating back centuries were preserved, guardians of history's truths and tales. Hours turned into days as I delved into the past, my eyes scanning faded pages and deciphering ancient scripts. It was amidst a collection of medieval manuscripts that I stumbled upon a reference to Königstrasse, hidden within a tome devoted to the city's architectural history. The passage spoke of a street that had been erased from official records and maps, a place of ill repute and dark happenings. Further references were fragmented, obscured by the passage of time. But they confirmed Heinrich's account of a cult that delved into forbidden knowledge and dark rituals. With each discovery, the pieces of the puzzle began to fit together, forming a picture that was as fascinating as it was terrifying. The cult, known as the Order of the Shadowed Veil, had indeed existed, its members drawn from the ranks of Nuremberg's elite. Their goal was to transcend the limitations of mortality and physical existence, to touch the fabric of the universe and peer into the abyss beyond. The convergence Heinrich had spoken of was not merely a tale to chill the bones, but a celestial event of significant power, one that the Order had sought to harness to open the portal. According to the manuscripts, the last attempt had been thwarted, but at a great cost. The street had been cursed, its very existence wiped from the city's consciousness, and yet Königstrasse persisted, 
a scar upon the landscape of Nuremberg. My research had drawn the attention of others, scholars, and historians intrigued by my inquiries. Among them was Elizabeth, a young academic whose expertise in the city's esoteric history proved invaluable. Together, we uncovered a map, hidden within a secret compartment of a 16th century desk, which detailed the precise location of Königstrasse and hinted at the existence of a subterranean chamber beneath the street, where the portal was believed to be located. The realization that we were on the brink of uncovering a truth long buried was exhilarating and daunting. Elizabeth and I prepared to explore Königstrasse under the cover of night, equipped with the map and a determination to face whatever secrets lay hidden. As we made our way through the deserted streets towards Königstrasse, the air grew colder, the shadows deeper. The street itself seemed to repel the light, enveloping us in darkness as we searched for the entrance to the underground chamber. It was Elizabeth who found it, hidden beneath the roots of an ancient oak, a stone doorway leading down into the earth. The descent was treacherous, the steps worn by time and neglect. Our torches flickered against the oppressive darkness, casting eerie shadows on the walls of the narrow passageway. The chamber at the end of the descent was vast, the air heavy with the scent of damp earth and the weight of centuries. In the center of the chamber stood an altar, carved from black stone, its surface etched with symbols that seemed to shift and writhe in the torchlight. The air around it thrummed with an unseen energy, a palpable force that made my skin crawl. It was here, Heinrich had said, that the portal would be opened, the convergence of celestial and terrestrial energies creating a bridge to another realm. Elizabeth and I stood before the altar, the reality of our situation settling upon us. We were standing on the precipice of the unknown, the fate of Nuremberg, and perhaps the world, resting in our hands. The convergence was imminent, the alignment of stars and planets aligning to unleash powers beyond comprehension. The knowledge we had gained, the secrets we had uncovered, had led us to this moment. As the first whispers of the celestial event began, the air around us charged with anticipation. We prepared to face the darkness, to seal the portal and prevent the chaos that threatened to engulf our world. What transpired in that chamber is a tale of courage, sacrifice, and the indomitable spirit of those who stand against the darkness. Elizabeth and I, bound by a shared destiny, confronted the shadows, our actions echoing through the annals of time, a testament to the light that exists within us all, even in the face of the darkest night. The story of Königstrasse, of Nuremberg, and of a clockmaker who stepped beyond the bounds of his ordinary life, is a reminder that history is not only a record of the past, but a mirror reflecting our present and future. It is a narrative that continues to unfold, with each of us playing a part in the grand tapestry of time. And so, as the dawn breaks upon a new day, the city of Nuremberg awakens, unaware of the battle fought in the shadows, the heroes who stood vigilant against the night. Königstrasse remains, a silent guardian of secrets and tales, a monument to the unseen forces that shape our world. In the end, the story I have lived, the journey I have undertaken, is one of discovery, not only of the mysteries that lie hidden beneath the surface of our world, but of the strength and courage that resides within each of us, waiting to be awakened.